Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. My name is The Flightless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel, and today on the seventh game of the Ace Attorney series, we are trying to. trying to prove an orca didn't kill someone. Yeah, uh, I. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, I think I have some good ideas on this. It, it does seem like we know where we're going. It's just, how do we get there? Well, let's not waste time. Let's jump into this, shall we? I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. And we have evidence to back up our theory as well. Do you now? I'd be very interested in seeing this evidence. The defense's trump card. That thing we found during our investigation yesterday. I want to go so far as to call it decisive, but... Now is the time to play it. Very well, Mr. Wright. Pleased to meet your evidence. What evidence shows that the crime may have been committed by a human? Well, isn't what we've already mentioned, which is the, uh, the, um, the coins? Take that. What's this? A coin? Yes, a fake coin used in the claims private show. We found it besides the pool. This coin is quite possibly the real murder weapon. This tiny little coin is the murder weapon? Mr. Wright, if there's another one of your bluffs. Hmm, as I say, the bolder the presentation, the less confident the solicitor. This is no bluff, and this isn't the only coin. There are 300 coins in all. I mean, a total of about, I don't know, seven pounds. Makes quite an impact, don't you think? This one just happens to have blood on it. Did you have the blood analyzed to see who it is? Well, not yet. But there were coins scattered all around the body, and the victim had a head wound. Taking these into account, I believe it has to be the victim's blood. So, to put it together, we have about seven pounds of coins by the side of the pool. One of them with the blood stain on it. I think the answer is pretty clear here. Your Honor, the defense proposes that the victim was killed beside the pool. Beside of the pool? But if the murder took place there, it would be very difficult to say the orchid did it. I realize you are trying to defend your client, but that theory is preposterous. How could 300 coins possibly be made to hit someone all at once? Well, it'd be pretty easy if they were in a bag or something of that nature. And, uh, so where is this bag that the coins were in? Unfortunately, Your Honor, we've recovered nothing of the sort from the scene. Doesn't mean they need to take it with them. It's possible the culprit took it with them. Hey, how about that? I love when the protagonists are on the same page. They, uh, took it? The true culprit used the coins as a blunt instrument to commit murder. Then, they threw the body into the pool before the camera security cameras started up. And then they left, taking the bag, the coins that were in with them. They got rid of the evidence that points to a human culprit to pin the blame on Orla. That was brilliant, Mr. Wright. You found a way to introduce the possibility of a human perpetrator. Perpetrator? Perpetrator. Right, that word. Yeah, somehow. Let's hope my luck holds out. Hmm, I wonder why Prosecutor Blackwell hasn't said anything. Possibility of a perpetrator with an defendant has now been suggested. But if we hold this possibility to be true, then what did Mr. Mr. Bloom witness? That's right. I saw the killer will attack the victim. Just like it did a year ago, singing a song. Hmm, I guess there still is that. Even with somebody else as a culprit, Orca's behavior still seems pretty bizarre. I wonder why she was doing the same thing that she did a year ago. 
But is it really that bizarre? What do you mean? To explain the inexplicable, all we have to do is turn our thinking around. Turn our thinking around, huh? Sounds good to me. Time to give the old turn my thinking around method a try. <laughs> Instead of trying to figure out why Ola did the same thing she did a year ago, I should consider the results that were produced by her behavior this time around. Orla sang a song, did some headbutts, and bit the victim. If the real culprit wanted to shift this suspicion onto Orla, then they would have needed to give people a reason to think Orla did in the first place. Hold on a second. Uh, Orla sang a song, did some headbutts, and bit the victim. Okay, I was thinking about watching the tape again to see if any of these things happened in the tape. But while she did headbutt the pirate, while she did sing a song, they're slightly out of order. But she never bit the victim. Or she never bit Pirate Shipley. Mr. Wright, as a lawyer, how do you explain your client's actions? I believe we should think of it in this way, Your Honor. What kind of effect did all his actions have on the case? Hmm, very well. Then why don't you explain it for the court? How did the defense actions affect the case? Um... They created a witness. I know that she... Um... I mean, there were coins on the bottom of the pool, so it could be this. But what I think happened most is it created a witness, because if the oiler wasn't doing that, then we would have never had to boom, right? It's not they killed the victim. This is the only one I know is not true, but it could be this one? I'm gonna go with this one. It seems most plausible. Mr. Plume focused her attention on the orca pole because she heard the song. The orca's act of singing a song created a witness. Created a witness? Isn't it possible? that fabricating a witness was the real culprit's true intention. After all, Mr. Plume witnessed two things. She saw Ola headbutt something over and over, and she saw the orca fight the victim. Those two actions of Ola's might have been the real culprit's plot to make the witness think the orca was attacking the victim. Are you saying the defendant was being manipulated by the true perpetrator? I mean, perpetrator? Dang it, you got me seeing it now. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, in all seriousness, so this is clever. Because I think this eliminates the plume from being the murderer. Although she could have still been acting with the true murderer, but I don't think she is. I think she's just... I think she was just a plant. Not a plant, that's the wrong word. She was... Yeah, I, I, as the judge said, she was manipulated. I think that's that's a very true statement, Judge. You, you said it better than I did. Very good job. Exactly. And that would explain all this actions perfectly. But the defendant is an orca. Is it impossible to manipulate her? Yes, there is a way to manipulate all this behavior with this. It's the whistle. Take that. Is this the whistle? Yes, Your Honor. Trainers at the aquarium use whistles to issue commands to Orla. But in truth, anyone can do it, provided they, they know the right signals. Oh, uh, that must be how they get Orla to do the tricks with the pirate shoes. The true culprit hid the body in a spot that couldn't be seen from the visitor's quarter. Then when Mr. Plume appeared, they gave Orla the commands. In other words, Orla was manipulated by the culprit to perform a series of tricks. What? what? And as for you, Miss Diplome, you were manipulated by the true culprit to play the part of the witness. I, I, Norma Diplome, was set up. I, Norma Diplome, my dear extracted air was used. No, no. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, um, 
apparently that was that was the thing that happened. <laughs> Uh, we had a breakdown of someone who wasn't even guilty. She just, like, freaked out because she feels... Yeah, she feels horrible. Uh, she was manipulated by this. Mr. Pluma, please do something about your tire. Please. Ah, uh, that was one wardrobe malfunction I did not want to see. <laughs> it would appear we need to shift our suspicion towards someone other than Ola. Prosecutor Blackwell, please have the bloodstained coin analyzed. You know what I want to know because y'all are very good at this. Uh, was that scene censored? Or was the... Or was it just understood that, you know, she had her coat fly off and it was always written that way? I always want to know. I, as I've said before, I don't mind self-censorship. But I don't like it when a person is forced to censorship by a company. That's like my stance on censorship. If you want to censor something, then you you have every right to do it. But don't force someone to censor what they did because it offends you. So on my channel, like you know, I'll play uh, I'll play a game where there maybe I have an, an f bomb. I won't say the f bomb, but if I'm playing a game like The Dark Pictures where the character says it, you know, I don't edit it out of my video. But at the same time, you know, it's it's just I, I don't know. Hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. You know, I don't like pe I don't like it when someone is told you have to change something because a company tells them they have to change something. It, yeah. Hmm. You waste your breath. I guess you possibly get Blackwell can't refute the possibility of a human suspect. You did it, boss. If the crime happened beside the pool, there's no way an orca could have done it. Now, if only we could find the bag of coins we're in. Hmm, in light of the new discovery, it appeared that the orca couldn't have done it. Exactly, Your Honor. The blood on the coin proves to be that of the victim. We can unequivocally overturn Ola's accusation. Uh-oh. He's getting serious. Overturn the defendant's accusation? I think not. Ack! Oh, I actually... Oh, jeez. Cut part of his hair. My, my hair, my beautiful hair. Yesterday, a new inmate was put into the prison. He said, the moment you relax is when you're most vulnerable. Hmm, and what did this man go in for? He is merely a sneaky thief who enjoys a spot of fishing now and again. But right dunno here would be easier to hook than any fish. <laughs> it's still my favorite thing in this game. Okay, second favorite thing. Uh, Pearl picking up rifle is absolutely the most adorable picture ever. But still, this this makes me laugh every time it happens. Now, mm, the hawk sure does love the judge's head. And the way the judge looks up at the bird, too, it's hilarious. What's this? The coin from before in some sort of bag? Uh, a bag? I don't think I'm going to like this. This is a coin bag that 300 coins were in. I believe you were looking for this. How did you get that? I never said we didn't find it at the crime scene. The bag had blood on it, so naturally I had sent to the crime lab. And does the blood belong to the victim? I'm going to assume that my worst fears are going to come true. Which is, if Orla is not the murderer, and it's a person who murdered Orla, then the next obvious suspect is Sasha. Is that where he's going with this? It does indeed, as does the blood on the coin. I knew it. So the blood on the coin did belong to the victim. The bag was open and the coins had all spilled out. But the bag alone wasn't proof enough to say that was used as a murder weapon. However, thanks to the defense and their coin, I am more than satisfied that it was. Prosecutor Black Quill, are you conceding that the two culprits committed the murder with the bag of coins? 
I shall concede that the victim was put into the pool after his death. However, even with the bag, it doesn't change the fact it was the orca that killed the victim. Okay, he's not going where I thought he was going. Where is he going? <clears throat> um, what? So, oh, hold on, hold on. I can see that the victim was put in the pool after his death. But, Ola still killed him. Even when he wasn't in the pool. Uh, are, are, are you going crazy here, Blackwell? What, what, what's your... How do you... How do you intend to explain this? What? How can you still suspect Ola? You said the true culprit manipulated Ola's behavior. But Ola isn't the kind of worker that would let someone control her. If anything, Ola used the victim's behavior against him to murder him. What? 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 Are you arguing that the orca manipulated a human being? Hmm. To prove it, I have summoned another witness. Marlin Rhymes. Take the stand. But Marlin Rhymes is a witness? Okay. Well, don't just stand there. State your name. Yeah, well, I told you, I don't want to be a weenies. I thought one witness would be quite enough to prove the defendant's guilt. But apparently, right to know won't be satisfied until every stone is unreturned. Well, son of a... Well, I might be fine. If I got to talk, then let's get this over with. Mr. Rhymes doesn't seem like a willing witness. I wonder what Prosecutor Blackwell is going to have him testify about. Um, so, uh, can we have your name and occupation for the record, Mr. Witness? Hmm. Well. Ahoy! Yo, yo! Yo, yo, ho! People at the draw, it's time to testify! Chilling with my crew about the ship shape, orcas, penguins, and the seascape. Cleaning and feeding, there ain't no end. But Dame Braddy Kid stores I shelter insane. Noob Animal Keeper from the House of Rhymes. I'm the Master Keeper, Marlin with the Rhymes. Oh my god. What did he do? Yeah, I am afraid I couldn't understand a word that you said. <laughs> Is that the, uh, the flip flop music young people nowadays like? What? Uh, 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 so, uh, so close, Your Honor. So close, and yet so very far. Will you please proceed with your, your testimony, witness, without all that flip flip? <laughs> ah, okay, fine. But I don't want to do this, I tell you. I feel like I'm sitting like Sasha. Ew. Witness testimony. The man manipulating Orca. Well, at about 10, 10 a.m., I was in the staff room. I heard a loud noise from the pool room. I went to the door to look in. I couldn't see the captain of the orca. I saw a bunch of these coins scattered around. The orca knows a certain spot people stand to play volleyball with her. I think maybe she knocked down the stuff that was piled up there and hit the captain. Okay, so more of an accidental death? Okay, I see what he's saying. He's saying, you know, that the captain stood in the wrong place and was hit, you know, with a bunch of points. But, uh-huh. Hmm, so that gives a little more info about the area around the orca pole. Orca pole diagram updated in the court record. It also has information about the area around the orca pole on the first and second floor. The pole is about 65 feet deep. Okay, I can't do anything with this picture. So the staff room, the second floor. The defendant made this stuff fall down. Overturned crates and assorted pops were scattered all over the pool room floor. There is no doubt that it was the orca that caused the mess. But could she really have done that from within the pool? Hmm. 
As I said, the orca is the only one who could have performed such a feat. The pool and its room were tidy the night before, putting its various odds and ends. But when our rhyming Marlin took a look-see, over 400 pounds of pops had fallen. To move it all in one go would challenge even the brawny prisoner in the cell next to mine. What is he? The jail gossip? So, how did 400 pounds of items fall all at once? I'll tell you how. The orca pulled on the cloth that was underneath them. Huh. And there's the bag of coins. Okay, I mean, it's not as far out as what I was thinking. This, this is more believable. And not so believable, but it's more believable. Oh wait, that would be all but impossible for human to move. Was child's play to an orca. During a friendly game of volleyball, the defendant made the crates fall. And the bag of coins that was among the items fell on the victim's head and killed him. The orca then toyed with the victim's body underwater, which is what Mr. Plume saw. Objection! I mean, I don't know about that because then you're... Oh, hold on. Then you're saying that the body was in the water for like nine minutes, right? Because the body was in the water before Mr. Plume saw the body. So the body was in the water for like nine minutes. And Ola just left him there. And then... For some reason, it just decided to ram the body when it saw Mr. Boom. I mean, that's, that's kind of a stretch on that one. Well, the witness only said he heard a loud noise. That doesn't automatically make it the sound of Ola making the items fall. Also... Why did you only look in on the pool room anyway, Mr. Rhymes? Well, an orca sometimes makes a loud noise to summon a trainer. But I'm still a newbie, so I don't have a security card to get into the room real yet. So even if she tries to summon somebody, there isn't much I can do about it. Well, I see, so the witness couldn't enter the crime scene. Objection! If Mr. Rhymes couldn't enter the room, there's at least one thing he can't be sure about. This statement that the orca was playing volleyball is purely speculation. Silence. Whether the orca was actually playing volleyball or not is not the issue. Traces of the orca's saliva were found on the cloth that was underneath the crates. The important point is that the orca is the only one that could have moved the items. Urg, I had to discredit that statement somehow. If I don't, it'd mean that Orla was the culprit, even if the victim died beside the pool. Cross-examination. The man manipulating Orca. What about 10, 10 a.m.? I was in the staff room. Hold it. With pearls, right? Are you sure about the time you were in the staff room? Well, yeah, I'm sure. Pretty good with time. Never been late to work once. Hmm. If you're sure about the time, then there's something wrong with that statement. I better take another look through the court record already. All right, please continue with your testimony, Mr. Rhymes. Could Rhymes be the true murderer? I mean, he seems like such a nice guy, but maybe that's all the, the ploy. Okay, 10, 10 a.m. Um... Apparently, Blocks Rhymes it was accidentally switched to Royal's calendar around 10 10 a.m. I was in the staff room. It doesn't say where they were when this calendar was switched around, though. Let's keep going. I heard a loud noise in the pool room, so I went into the door to look in. Hold it! You heard the noise all the way in the staff room. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, map. We have a map now, right? So he was in the food prep room. Right? Because he was prepping food. 
at 10 10. Not the staff. Well, that's right. You York, the blue room, and the staff room are pretty close to each other. Anyway, I heard the noise. So I went into the room of the pool room. I don't have a security card, so all I could do was look through the door crack. What kind of noise did you hear? Ah, want me to describe it? Yo, yeez! Yo, what up in the courtroom? Yo, yo, yo! The crash, the boom, the falling down, the relativity! Every falling wind, sweet simplicity! It's testimony, yo! And ain't got no fallacies! Things falling and breaking was pure insanity! Word! It's kinda like that. Okay! But why the need to wrap it? Well, I don't really get ill of that, but in any case, I got it was a very loud noise, like a neck flip flop. Very well, describe uh, what you saw at the scene. Well, I couldn't see the captain or the orca. I saw a bunch of coins scattered around. Hold it! You couldn't see the victim. I was just looking through the door crack. I guess all that said was blocking my view. I didn't notice a whole bunch of coins scattered all over the place, though. But at the time, I had no idea the captain was dead. Hmm, killed by gold coins. Ironic, isn't it? Perhaps the orca wanted to be paid for her labor, painting coins raining from the skies. Coins raining from the skies? It makes it sound almost poetic. But the hard truth is that those coins were actually the murder weapon. We all deserve to be paid for our work, do we not? I shall have a fine meal tonight. If you find our client guilty, that is. Mr. Rhymes, do you have a theory on how the things got knocked down? Of course I do! We allow the York and knows in a certain spot people staying to play volleyball with her. Hold it! She uses this ball and does a spike, right? We had a nice little demonstration of this spike for ourselves just yesterday. Yo, yo, yo! If you stay on the mark of the floor, the Oka spikes a ball at you! Hmm, Tucker is good at flying straight at his target as well. And I see plenty of targets right here in this room. Hmm? <laughs> what? Everybody's so busy protecting the head, they forgot about the trial. <laughs> including you. Tell them what the defendant caused to happen. Well, the orca knows people staying in a certain spot for volleyball. So like, I think maybe she knocked down the stuff that she was piled up there and hit the captain. Hold it. Are you saying you think she knocked down the items on purpose? I don't want to believe myself, but that orca is pretty dang smart. It might be easy for her to pull the cloth on the clap and the stuff while she was playing volleyball. Orcas are really strong. One could pull on those things and would come crashing down. I guess maybe an orca could be strong enough to make that much stuff fall. I've never seen an orca play tug of war myself. But the fact is, this one did. The traces of the orca saliva found on the cloth prove it. How long do you plan to walk tightrope on those shaky theories of yours? Wait until you see me do ac acrobatics. Moments like these are what I became a lawyer again for. I don't know why, but Mr. Rhyme's lying. I'm afraid I had to expose that secret he and Pearls were keeping to resolve this. Objection! Yeah, you were on the first floor. You say you were in the staff room, but is that really true? It's true. Why would I lie about a thing like that? Mr. Rhymes, have you ever seen this calendar before? It's so adorable. Hey, that's uh... I see you recognize it. Oh, yeah, that's a rifle calendar. It's a big hit with the ship shape aquarium gift shop. Thank you for shopping at ship shape. Mr. Rhymes, please refrain from scaring the fish around the witness. <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry, your baldness. Taco will have them cleaned up in no time. Food! Uh, I guess that bird comes in handy now and then. Well, all right, Mr. Wright. You've all seen your cute souvenir now, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, no, your honor. This isn't my calendar. It was originally the witnesses, but it came to the position of a certain young lady. What? 
Mr. Rhymes and this young lady first met each other in the food prep room. After a mishap, their calendars got switched around. They ran into each other at about 10.10am 10, 10 in the food prep room. So clearly, the witness was not in the staff room. In other words, there's no way he could have heard the noise in the pool room upstairs. What's this? This is the first I'm hearing about any calendar. Well, that's because you didn't tell me about the bag of coins you found, huh? Turn about is only fair play, you s- mm. Anyway, uh, that's because Mr. Rhymes and Pearls are keeping it a secret. You lied to me! This transgression will not go unpunished. Arr! So, uh, Mr. Rhymes, before uh, you die horribly in your sleep by this prosecutor, uh, you didn't hear the noise of the equipment falling after all, did you? Oh, can I meet it? I didn't hear the noise of the orca pool of my seal. But somebody told me about it. Who told you about it? It was... Mr. Crab? Unless you tell the truth, Mr. Rhymes, I can't save Orla. And I'm sure you know how sad that would make Miss Buckler. Yeah, all the dots. I heard about it. From Sasha. Ooh. What? From Miss Buckler? But, but that doesn't make any sense. What is going on here? Hmm. Now it's the trainer's own words that drive the orca into a corner. How do you like being bitten by your own client, right, Dunno? Ugh! Certainly didn't see this coming. What perfect timing. There was something I want to ask Miss Buckler about the orca. The prosecution calls the trainer, Miss Sasha Buckler, to the stand. Yes, but it would be a good idea to hear what the workers trainer has to say. I don't know what Sasha is going to say. But I'll just have to meet it head on. Whatever it is. We will take a 20 minute recess while the witness is summoned. To be continued. Yeah, um, we're just going to, um, we're just going to continue to, uh, move on, shall we? Yes. July 21st, 1039 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Mr. Wright, are you going to cross-examine Sasha? I guess I'll have to ask her about the noise from the stuff falling down. Uh, Mr. Wright? Mr. Rhymes, why did you lie? I, I didn't want to have Sasha to appear in the court, you know? I don't know if anybody had to testify. You know, I should be the one to do it for her. But why would you go through all those links? Well... Did you see the entry for the 20th on that calendar? Did know about me the captain at the Orca Pool at like 7 o'clock? Yeah, I found the calendar in the net room. I think it's probably Sasha's. What? Then that means... I guess it does look more of a woman's calendar than a man's. Come on. It's got a adorable penguin. That has no gender attached to it. A meeting with the victim was scheduled for 7 a.m. on the 20th. Well, I didn't want suspicion to fall on Sasha. Mr. Wright, I gotta go back to the aquarium to look after the orc in Sasha's place. Well, I'll be waiting for you on the other end of that TV phone. Please take care of Sasha. Okay, we can't let Buzz get a black book get the best of us. Time to refocus. You're right. After all, we're the only ones who can save Orla. Yeah, but we, are we uh, condemning Sasha by doing so? At the end of the day, justice must be served, right? Whatever the truth is, 
however horrible, it's still the truth. July 21st, 1102 AM, District Court, courtroom number four. I like how the bird is on his shoulder. Court will now reconvene. Prosecutor Black will please call the witness to the stand. <sighs> Again, you waste your breath. Can we not take out a sword in a courtroom, please? I mean, okay, actually, you probably need that sword considering the guy next to you. Actually, it's probably not a good idea to have that sword because he may consider that as a duel and kill you. My name is Sasha, and I be one of Captain Orla's swashbucklers. I came to rescue me bucko for the false charges put on her by the dead pirate Nostache. No stash. I guess no sash refers to Puskita Black Bell this time. <laughs> well, it can't be the judge. He has a mustache and a full beard. Now then, Captain Judge, shall we begin the pirate court? Uh, Captain Judge? Hmm. I really like the sound of that. <laughs> Makes me feel like a salty old sea dog. And scene. How was that for self intro? The court is not amused. It is not a show. Now state your full name and occupation. I'm Sasha Buckler. I work at Ship Shape Aquarium. I perform in our Swashbuckler Spectacular Pirate Show alongside Ola as her trainer. Well, you seem like a completely different person now. You really think so? Well, thanks. I was in my Pirate Show persona just then. Prosecutor Blackwell said I could introduce myself any way that I like. I bet money he didn't think you were going to do it like that. And what will this witness testify about? The orca manipulate the victim into playing volleyball and then knock the items down. The witness will report about hearing the noise that caused the victim's death. Now just wait a minute. Sure, Ola uses the ball to break pops sometimes. She even spiked the ball at the giant octopus league yesterday when I was cleaning. So, o so Ola was the one who broke that leg, huh? But she could have knocked down that huge stack of equipment with a little ball. Hmm, I thought you were paying attention to the trial over the telecast. But you apparently know nothing of what we have been discussing. The orca knocked down the equipment by pulling on the cloth that was beneath it. No one said anything about the orca knocking it down with a ball. What? Is that what you're talking about? Aww. Look at that. I like a little fish sword. Totally fake, but really cool. And came in here to give possibly no stash a good key hauling. But now I'm the one getting the cat nine tails. Oh, he's as vicious as a tiger shark. Miss Buckler, just focus on your testimony and you'll be all right. Don't worry, we'll take care of that tiger shark for you. Okay. Thank you, Athena. Okay, I can do this. My testimony will be phenomenal. <laughs> all right, Miss Buckler, please proceed with your testimony if you would. Wait, no testimony. Hearing the noise. I admit I heard Ola summoning me with a loud noise. But that the frame guest scream I heard over the walkie talkie was more urgent. I talked to Norma de Plume first, and then went to the pool room with the security guard. The equipment was everywhere, and the captain was lying in the middle of it all. Hmm, her story doesn't seem to be much different from Mother Mimes' testimony. Or does it? The circumstances are different. The actual order of Orla's actions depend on the Orla the witness heard the two voices. Yeah, and she mentioned like a scream? The Crames guest scream. So may, ha may have that been Norma? If she heard the scream first, the prosecution claims don't stand up. Objection! Huh. <sighs> Unfortunately for you, she doesn't remember the order of what she said. Uh, she, she doesn't? 
I was distracted at the time, so I don't really recall which I heard first. I was lost in thought until the guard brought me back to myself, so I am no help. As long as the order remains unclear, I shall not alter the prosecution's claims. After killing the victim with the bag of coins, the orca toyed with the body in the water. I had to turn things around here somehow. Unless I can prove the sound Sasha heard was not the sound of the victim's murder. Blackwell's claim that Ola pulled down the equipment to kill the victim will stand. So, unless I can prove the sound Sasha heard was not the sound of the victim's murder. If I want to save Orla, I have to find a contradiction no matter how small. Very well, your cross-examining please, please, Mr. Wright. Hearing the noise. I admit, I heard Orla summoning me with a loud noise. What made you think Ola was summoning you? Ola knows the sound of a Christ doesn't carry far enough. So sometimes she summons people by making a loud noise. Haha, <laughs> that Ola is smarter than an average whale, I tell you. Hmm, Taka would not be bested in a battle of wits. Oh yeah, let's we'll see how you go against Rifle. Rifle would kick that bird's butt. Wait a minute. Widget is the smartest one of all. No, wife was. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the smartest one of all? Widget. <laughs> Am I expected to enter Trucy into this? My kid is better than yours, Appaloosa. And did you hear the summons of this very intelligent Ola immediately? I couldn't right away. Although I was concerned about her, of course. But the aquarium's guest screams I heard over the walkie-talkie was more urgent. Hold it. You heard Mr. Plume scream. That's right. I heard him through the walkie-talkie of a guard making his rounds. Ah! I could still hear it in my head. It was so loud, I thought it was a sea lion. Mr. Plume sort of reminds me of a sea lion, actually. I know, right? Oh, I should call her Sea Lion Lady and see how she likes it. Oh, I just realized I was being Sea Lion before, but anyway. I guess Athena is still upset about being called the Yellow Girl. Now, what did you have to hear in the visitor scream? I talked to Noma Diplom first, and then went to the pool room with the security, security guard. Hold it. Sorry, I suddenly got the hiccups there. Like three in a row. You and the security guard headed to the orca pool room. Yeah, apparently that obnoxious fighter lady said she didn't trust me by myself. That's why, after talking to her, the guard and I went to the pool room together. Why be the one so suspicious? Ah, I demand a swordfish duel. That's what I felt like saying to her anyway. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't get it. That was a line from the show when Ola and Sasha quarrel with each other. Did you do your swashbuckler spectacular homework, your honor? Uh, why am I getting scolded here, Mr. Wright? <laughs> why am I getting scolded here, your honor? Miss Buckler, please tell me what happened after you headed to the pool room. Alright, when the garden I got there, we saw that. The equipment was everywhere, and the captain was lying in the middle of it all. Hold it. What do you recall about this scene exactly? I don't remember much, to be honest. Oops, I was in total shock from seeing the captain like that. If you ask me something specific, I might be able to remember it though. Specific questions, huh? Okay, let's see. What should I ask her about? Things got around or Jack Shipley? Let's ask about Jack Shipley because that seems more specific. Could you tell me more about the state you found the victim in? It's so hard to even think about right now. 
Sasha is deeply traumatized by the victim's death. I guess I should have pushed her on it then. Poor Sasha. She must have really adored him. Do you think Olaf really did make that stuff fall down? I think we probably need more information before we can know what really happened. Let's be careful not to let a single inconsistency slip past us. Okay, so I need to go back to that line and probably ask her about the stuff that fell. Things scattered around. Could you tell me more about the things that were scattered around? There were equipment and parts of the new show. The new show? Yeah, we were supposed to be a brand new Swashbuck Spectacular yesterday. We already defeated the giant octopus and no stash after all. We are going to have a new nemesis, Red Stash. You see on the flyer. Captain Ola has a new rival featuring the dashing red stash with a fluttering red car scarf. Who will obtain the gold points hidden in this scarf skull rock? Oh, that's the rifle that's the fly rifle was distributing. Who will obtain the gold coins hidden in skull rock? Oh, I wish it could be me. Leave it to you, Athena, to know all about it. Oh, has even got some new tricks with this new show. Last record of fire updated in the court record. Uh, an advertisement for a new show was dropped by a penguin. So all this stuff that fell down was for the new show, was it? That's right. Bunch of pops of crates and other equipment stacked up. Your Honor, for the record, I'd like the information to add to the witness testimony. Very well, Miss Buckler. Please append what you just said to your testimony. Sure thing. The pops of the new show were everywhere, and the captain was in the middle of it all. Hold it. These pops of the new show, what kind of things were they? A blow up dolphin and anchor, red sash's costume, the bag of coins, you know, stuff like that. The captain was wearing his usual costume, and the new pops were all there. Wait a minute, something about that doesn't seem right. What's up? Oh, my Sasha's testimony. Yeah, let's just con say there is. You say the captain was wearing his usual costume. But is that completely accurate? Come on, Phoenix! Why are you nitpicking my testimony for? Well, if we look at the body, we see that there's a discrepancy between that and your statement. You say that the victim was wearing his usual costume. But you'll notice that the victim was wearing a red scarf around his neck. I imagine this red scarf is part of his costume for the new pirate show. Oh, you're right. It's written right here in the flyer for the new show. Featuring the dashing red stash with the floating red skirt. Although I have to say, it looks just like the red scarf was added to his old costume. Yeah, well, Captain was never one to spend much money on costumes. But, you know, Captain wasn't wearing that red scarf. But in the photo, I believe I see a red scarf. Yeah, it's not wrapped around his neck, it's just draped on top of his neck. This red scarf was packed away with the rest of the new show's equipment. It must have fallen on top of the captain when the equipment fell down. Oh, I see. It looks like a discrepancy wasn't really a discrepancy at all. So the scarf doesn't have anything to do with the case? There's something about the timing of the stuff falling that bothers me. Hold on. The timing of the stuff falling. The timing. Maybe my theory has been all wrong from the beginning. Maybe the bag of coins isn't the murder weapon. Really? Haha. <laughs> and so your last cross examination ends in failure as well. You should know that such a feeble slash will never hurt me. As I said, the orca made the equipment fall and then toyed with the body in the water. Objection! I'm sorry, Puskid Blackwell, but based on the circumstances at the scene, the defendant couldn't have dragged the body into the water after the equipment fell. Mm hmm. And why, pray tell us that? Oh, I'll tell you, alright. If my theory has been all wrong, then I'll just have to fix it. Yes, Mr. Wright, please do tell the court. What indicates the body was not dragged into the water after the animals fell? What indicates 
that the body was not dragged into the water. Well, the only thing I can think of is a scarf because we've been talking about it. So let's just go with it. This red scarf fell at the same time as a bag of coins. But if the body was dragged into the pool after the bag of coins fell, then the red scarf wouldn't still be on top of the body. What? Uh, in other words, the victim was already dead when the equipment came crashing down. Therefore, the bag of coins that fell with the red scarf was not the murder weapon. Silence. But it was the defense who claimed the bag of coins was a murder weapon to begin with. Well, yeah, that's true. Do you intend to abandon your original argument? Well, after hearing the testimony, I realized my theory about the murder weapon was wrong. Please recall the facts we have learned so far. It's a fact that what Orla bit was the victim's dead body. After all, when we saw the victim on the security footage, she was already dead. But then, Orla carried the victim's body to the side of the pool and knocked down the equipment for the new pirate show that was piled up there. Maybe Orla was trying to alert the human to the victim's condition. If Orla knocked the items down on the victim after he was already dead, then it means the defendant didn't kill the victim with those items. But that's preposterous! <sighs> you mean still your argument is lacking. If neither the orcas hit by the other bag of coins with a man or death, then how do you propose the victim was killed? Arg! Oh, that's a very good point. The defense is now abandoning his original theory. Well, then we would need a new theory as to what the murder weapon was. Ugh, alright. I doubt I have no clue what would go over well. Alright, let's go over what we still need to find out about the victim's body. What we don't know is how he died and what his body, why his body was at the bottom of the pool. I wonder if there's something that would explain both of those things at once. Hmm, how did the victim's body stick to the bottom of the pool? On a diagram, it's easy enough to move the body to the bottom of the pool. But in real life, the water would just cause the body to float. So something had to be weighing him down. Right. Hold on. Water? Okay, then what if we flip that around? What if there was no water? Then the body would go down in an instant. So could the real manner of death be... There was no water and someone pushed him and he cracked his head on the bottom of the pool. Thanks for the great hit, Athena. What? I helped you and I didn't even know it. Your Honor, I think we know the real manner of the victim's death. I think what do, Mr. Wright? Expect a clear answer. Now then, what was the real manner of Jack Shipley's death? What's the man of death that moved the victim to the bottom of the pool in an instant? Uh, falling. Please take a look at the diagram of the orca pool. If there was no water in this pool, then it would be very easy to move the victim's body to the bottom of the pool. Ah! Well, he was dropped straight down. Oh my, could that be the true man of death? Well, the orca pool is about 65 feet deep. If the victim were to go from the top of the pool to the bottom when there was no water, well, then he would, without question, have fallen to his death. Death from a fool! Dang, that's your answer. It all makes perfect sense. If he fell, that would explain the signs of blood force trauma a lot of his body, too. The culprit pushed the victim into the pool when there was no water in it. After doing something to keep the body from floating up, they filled the body with the pool with water. The pool water washed away any signs of blood so no one would realize that it fell. So what was Ola doing all this? This device doesn't actually make sense.
order, order in the court. Just as surprised as you are, but I must have order. The following was the manner it did, and that means the, the defendant's behavior. Was the result to be manipulated by the two culprits as the defense claimed? Yes, it would have to be. All that needs to be explained now is how the real culprit commanded Orla. Miss Buckler, is there a way to instruct Orla to bite someone? What? What kind of trick would that be? Of course not. Then could you tell us about the tricks Orla does now? Well, there's jumping, dancing, and playing volleyball. Well, and she can spin, do the rock and roll trick, and sing the Smash Buckler Spectacular song. Those sound like pretty nice tricks, but I doubt they're related to this case. She's also practicing two new top secret tricks. There's a human rocket, where she shoots somebody up into the air. And then there's the last saver trick, where she brings a drowning person to the surface. Ah! Hey, one of those top secret tricks might have something to do with the case. Now, which of these two tricks sounds relevant to the case? The, the lifesaver one, of course. So in the lifesaver trick, Orla brings a drowning person to the surface, correct? You caught it! Orla's still learning how to hold someone gently in her mouth. So she sometimes bites into the clothes, but she's never heard a person skiing. She brings a drowning person to the surface? Well then, that must be it! And then the killer whale swam up to the surface with the victim in its mouth! Hmm, well that matches up early with Mr. Bloom saying your testimony. The real culprit must have used the lifesaver trick command to manipulate Orla. Hmm, I still find this very hard to believe. Then let's see it for ourselves. Let's have Orla show us her trick using a practice dummy. Hmm, as you wish. Well, the prosecution doesn't appear to have any objection. Miss Buckley, will you please proceed? Okay, sure. I'll show you a less phenomenal trick. Hey, Marlin, are you ready over there? Wow, okay, let me go get the glasses, dummy. Well, there, it's in the pool. Ready and standing by, Sasha. Here it goes. All the secret new trick, the lifesaver. So cute. Clothes got torn up, Lil. But Dummy doesn't have any marks on it. Aww. There you have it. All the secret new trick. Yay! Wow, the org is really amazing. Cute thing like that wouldn't hurt anybody. Sounds like the gallery loved Ola's performance. That was great. That awesome trick captured everyone's heart. Oh, wonderful. I wish I could see more. Well, I don't think everyone. Hmm. Looks like we silent. Let's get to Blackwell. Thank you, Ola and Miss Buckler. And thank you too, Mr. Rhymes. And so now you can clearly see how Ola was manipulated. The bottom of the orca pool needs to be examined immediately. We might still find some evidence of the victim falling to his death. Let's get a black quill. Please have that taken care of at once. Huh. Why are they asking him? He's in jail. Ask, um, Fulbright. Uh, excuse me, Prescott Blackwell, but I'm requesting further investigation. Uh. Yeah! Speaking of Fulbright. Tis tis, Pasca to Black Quill. You have to answer the nice judge politely. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. The thing you asked for just came in. And, and you couldn't be bothered to think of a less violent way to deliver it. What did Pasca Black Quill ask for? Hmm. I've been waiting for this. Oh, and what is that? An updated autopsy report. What? Why did it have to come now? During the recess, I ordered the body to be re-examined. 
something started nagging at me during the course of the trial, you see. Huh. Here. Take it like me to read it? Very well. Cause of death, thought to be from 65 foot full. Well, that goes with what we're saying. Chibli's autopsy report updated in the court record. Instant death from brain contusion. There are signs of forced trauma all over the body. Details. Estimated time of death from 12 to 10 a.m. on July 20th. So it could have happened at 7.20 or whatever. When he was meeting with Sasha. Contusion from head trauma. Thought to be a 56 feet of fall into pool. Bruised all over. Sailing to pool bottom is 100 feet. Blow to head received after death. But with this, but this is decisive evidence that substantiates Mr. Wright's theory. What? It's something good for a change? The manner of death was falling into an empty pool, the orca can't be responsible. Seems Orla's complete innocence has been proven. Huh. I suppose I can't deny that. This is fantastic! You did it, Mr. Wright! Prosecutor Blackwell isn't even trying to refute it. All that is saved! Hey, yeah! Is it really safe to celebrate? It would appear more investigation in this case is necessary. First, allow me to render my verdict. The court finds Venet Orla Shipley. Not guilty! Yeah, but the question now is, was it an accident that he died? Was it an accidental death? Or did someone push him? I feel like this case isn't over. Even though it said not guilty, there's something else that we had we had to figure out who killed him. I, I, I'm almost sure it's a murder. You did it. Thank you so much, Phoenix. Thank you, Athena. Oh, and Mullen, thank you too. Congrats, sis! Aww. Time to celebrate! Go on, eat it! Aww. Hee <laughs> hee. Glad to see everybody so happy, and I'm so absolutely thrilled about the verdict. Hmm. Music just stops. Thank you, right to know. Huh? For what? Huh. The drain pool. Thanks to you, the truth is finally clear. Fulbright, arrest this woman. Certainly! Right away, Prosecutor Blackwell! Sasha Buckler! You are hereby under arrest for the murder of Jack Shipley! Yeah, I saw this one coming a mile away. Yeah, I, as I said, if, if it was... If it was a murder, then Sasha Buckley is the most logical suspect. And, uh, and, and I, I can't, I, I can't argue that. It, it's something that I even thought of, so. What? What are you talking about? What reason could you possibly have? Come now, you must have had some idea in the back of your dull little mind. The true culprit manipulated the orca in order to have false charges brought upon her. And who has the only one with the ability to accomplish that? It can only be the Orca's trainer. Yeah, the eye soul's coming. But I'm sure there's some other explanation. Silence. I don't need any of your basis counter arguments. Have you forgotten? In order to enter the Orca room pool, a security card is necessary. Oh, that's a really cute card. A security card that only the victim is Sasha Buckler possessed. Miss Buckler is the only one who could have caused the victim to fall to his death. Yeesh! What? No, I don't believe it. Miss Buckler was so upset by Mr. Shipley's death, she couldn't have done it. Hmm, full bright. We asked the security company yesterday to check the security guard logs. The report just came in during the recess. The night before the incident, Sasha Buckler used her card to enter the Orca Pool room. 
And after that, not a single person entered the pool room. Sounds like a previous case with security cards. I forgot which one it is, but I know there's a case like this. Not until the incident was discovered when Miss Buckler and the guard ran in. Objection! But no one would commit murder where the card usage was being recorded. Uh, apparently, the aquarium employees don't know that the card usage is tracked. What's more, Miss Buckler was seen arguing that the vic with the victim before the incident. So, Miss Trainer, what were you arguing about? It was a private matter. But it wasn't anything I would kill him over. That's ridiculous! Miss Buckler is the only one who entered the room, and she knows how to command Ola. Besides, I thought it was suspicious from the very beginning. You suspected Miss Buckler from the start? The orca did tricks because someone commanded her to do so. Possibly someone with a heart so black as to make her own partner the murder weapon. Possibility orca kill the victim, the possibility human manipulate the orca. I looked into both. So he suspected both Sasha and Ola all along. Huh. My gratitude to you, after all. You were the one who drew out that information about the lifesaver trick. The orca you saved was an unwitting victim. A victim made to look like the weapon that killed Jack Shipley! <laughs> no! Alright, come along then. Let's have a good long talk. Wait, I didn't kill the captain. And I would never try to frame Orla. Why would I hurt the ones I love like that? Sasha. Phoenix, Athena, you gotta believe me. I... Sasha didn't kill him. I believe that with all my heart. There's gotta be something we can do. I feel the same way. Could I have done something differently? But never in my wildest dreams I imagined things turning out like this. Hmm. It would appear that this case has taken on an entirely new aspect. But this trial is only concerned with the ruling on the defendant or Shipley. So I'm afraid this concludes today's trial. Court is adjourned. To be continued. Okay, well, that seems like a logical stopping point. Which is good, because, yeah, we need to be stopping. Oh, this, yeah, I anticipated this, too. That's the annoying thing. I said, if Ola isn't the murderer, then it's only logical that the next person that would be the suspect would be Sasha Buckler. And it makes a lot of sense to me then. And it makes a lot of sense to me now. I mean, don't forget, we found that penguin book that is Sasha's that said she had a meeting with the captain. They were arguing. What were they arguing about? About why the pool was drained, possibly. And then she pushes him in the pool. I mean, it makes, it makes perfect sense to me. Which is the really bad thing because... We don't want it to make perfect sense to us because that means we're on the prosecution side. I'm pretty sure there was a case like this where I said the same thing where I was like, this makes a lot of sense and I'm with them. Yeah, because it, it, it makes a lot of sense, but we got to believe in our client. Got to believe in our client. All right, my friends. So I love you all so very much. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And until next time, on a blind let's play of Ace Attorney Dual Destiny, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter, and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.